Okay, North is dealer. Let's have a look what they've got. So, um, North has got 10, 11 points in total. They've got 5-5. Five, five. Um, so, based on the rule of 20, rule of 20 is your points plus the number of cards in your two longest suits. So that's 11 points plus 5 spades, 5 diamonds is 21. So we pass the rule of 20 by 1, which means we are equivalent to an opening hand. Normally you need 12 points to open the bidding, but the shape here justifies an opening bid. So we want to open the bidding. Uh, we're on balance, so we want to open a suit. So we have a choice. We either open spades or diamonds. Um, whenever you have two equal length suits, with one exception, which I'll mention in a minute, whenever you have two equal length suits, you always want to open your higher ranking suit. The reason for that is when you open, in this hand, one spade, you're going to be rebidding diamonds next. So you're going to be rebidding, hopefully, unless other people get in the way, uh, two diamonds. When you go one spade, two diamonds, it's easier for your partner to return to spades on the next, on the next round because it's at the same level. That's because spades are higher ranking. Whereas if you open one diamond and then rebid two spades, which will happen a lot of the time, um, you will then have to go back to three diamonds if your partner prefers diamonds. Not only that, you'll be showing five diamonds, four spades, whereas really we want to show five spades, four diamonds, because spades are more important. Um, if allowed, if we got three bids, we could go spades, diamonds, and then diamonds again, which would show our true five, five shape. But that would require quite a lot of bidding space, and we don't always get the room to do that, which is why we want to get the five card major in and not too concerned about the five card minor. So I would start with one spade, and the intention is going to be to rebid the diamond to show our unbalanced nature, and at that stage it will show five, four. So one spade is the start. All right, East cards. So this is quite unusual. Um, it's not often the opponents will open a suit and you have five cards, and not only that, five decent cards in their suit. So when you have a fit with the opponents, um, the hand kind of decreases in value because you want to fit with your partner. So when you have a fit with the opponents, what you tend to find is there is a misfit going on. The opponents have a misfit because you have a fit with the opponents and therefore your side has a misfit. And that's not guaranteed. Your partner might have lots of hearts or lots of clubs to give you a fit there. But the theory here is it's starting to, your hand is starting to feel worse and that's because the opponents have opened spades. If the opponents have opened any other suit, we would have overcalled one spade, absolutely. But because they've opened spades, the suit we want to bid, um, our hand has decreased in value. So we can't just bid two spades because bidding the opponent's suit is never a natural bid. So if we bid two spades, that is not I have five spades and ten plus points, as it normally would be. That's because the opponents have bid spades already. So our options are pass, double, or bid no trumps, basically. Um, if we were to double, that would be take out. So that would say short spades, and I want you to bid something other than spades, partner. So that doesn't work because our partner will bid one of these three suits when really we want to play in this suit, albeit the opponent has that suit. Um, so double doesn't work. And bidding no trumps. Now, no trumps looks okay because we've got a balanced hand. We have a stopper in the enemy suit, ace queen. Um, no trumps looks okay, but when you're an overcaller, you need more points to make a no trump overcall. So with 13 points, we haven't got enough points to make a one no trump overcall. One no trump overcall is sort of 15 to 18 ish. Um, so we're nowhere near. We're, we're at least two points off the amount you need for a one no trump overcall. What that means is, with this opening hand, with a five card major, you're going to pass. So that's exceptionally rare. And the reasons are, one, we haven't got enough points to bid no trumps as an overcaller. And two, the opponents have opened our long major, which means the hand is getting worse. It feels like a misfit. So therefore I would pass and wait to see what happens. All right, South cards. South's responding to one spade. Let's see what they've got. So South has got a grand six points in total. Not particularly good. Um, six or more points, you should respond something, though, because our partner might have a really good hand, 18, 19 sort of points over there. Um, we can't support our partner's spades because we don't know they've, we only know they've got four or more at this stage. Um, so we can't, can't support the spades, and we shouldn't pass with this, with this number of points. So your instinct may well be to bid the club suit. If you bid two clubs, that would feel instinctive. That feels kind of obvious, if you like. The problem with bidding two clubs is that you're bidding at the two level. And whenever you bid two, at the two level as a responder, um, you're promising a certain number of points, which is 10-ish. A good nine sometimes sneaks in there, but 10 or more is typically what you need for a two-level response, which we don't have. Um, we don't have anywhere near 10 points. We're miles away, actually. Um, yes, we have a nice six-card suit, 
but we don't have enough points to bid two clubs. And if we do bid two clubs and our partner suddenly puts us in three no trumps because they've got 15 points thinking we've got 10, we will be in trouble. So there is only one bid in the box that satisfies all of those things. We can't bid spades, we can't bid at the two level, and we can't pass. There's only one bid in the box that ticks all those boxes, and that is one no trump. The dustbin response. Um, we call it dustbin response because a lot of bad hands get thrown into it. So we have to bid. We can't bid at the two level, so therefore we have to bid one no trump. It doesn't promise a balanced hand as the responder. It's unusual for no trumps not to be balanced, but it's because we're forced here. We have to bid, assuming we've got six or more points, and we can't bid anything other than no trumps. So one no trump simply says six to nine points, and I do not have a fit for your major in this instance space. So that's what I do. Now to West. Let's see what West has got. Right, West has got six, seven, eight, nine, ten points in total. Um, this is quite a distributional hand. A seven card suit, especially a seven card major, is something you almost always want to mention. Um, there are very, very rare cases where you can't bid when the opponents bid a lot higher than you very quickly, but typically you want to try and get involved with a seven card suit, especially a good quality seven card suit. King, Queen, Jack, Ten is very good. And uh, it's a major as well. So everything's pointing towards bidding here. Um, given that we've got 10 points, we're right on the cusp. We could bid 2 hearts, which is 5 or more hearts, and 10 or more points. Or we could make a preemptive bid. Preemptive bids tend to be up to around 10 points. So we have a choice. We could bid 2 hearts, or we could bid 3 hearts. 3 hearts will be a jump, and therefore a preemptive bid. It would show more hearts and fewer points. So given that we're right on the line, 2 hearts or 3 hearts are both applicable bids. 2 hearts will be a better hand but not necessarily as many hearts, whereas 3 hearts will be a worse hand with more hearts. Um, so either, either is fine here. I personally prefer the preemptive bid. That's for two reasons. Firstly, our hand is not that good. It is 10 points, so it's, not, it's, it's the bottom of the barrel for a 2 heart overcall. Secondly, um, the opponents are bidding. The opponents have opened on our left, our partner passed, and they've responded on our right, which means the opponents likely have more points than us. That's not guaranteed, but it's likely. So when the opponents have more points than us, we want to try to be more irritating if possible. So a preemptive bid is more likely to be destructive in the bidding. And thirdly, our suit is of excellent quality. King, Queen, Jack, Ten is the preemptor's suit. Now you might think that's strange, because surely the ace and the King, Queen, Jack, Ten is better. But the good thing about a King, Queen, Jack, Ten is that you make a lot of tricks when this suit is trumps, and you don't make a lot of tricks when you're defending. That's because you don't have the ace. What you will find a lot of the time is that they have the ace of hearts, and then they don't have any more hearts in this particular hand. So therefore, I mean, that, that isn't actually the case. As it happens, East has the ace of hearts here, but we don't know that, of course. Um, so defensively speaking, this hand is worth maybe a trick, maybe two if things go very well if the King of Diamonds makes a trick and the King of Hearts becomes a trick by getting rid of their ace. Um, but offensively speaking, this suit is worth at least six tricks because you get rid of their ace of hearts and you draw the trumps with these three nice honours and you will have six, maybe seven tricks in your own hand. This is what's known as an offensive hand. It's a hand that wants to play the, play the contract, basically. Um, and King, Queen, Jack, Ten is something that points towards preempting. So therefore, I'm certainly not passing. It's a choice between two hearts or three hearts. I would jump and bid three hearts to be preemptive. All right, back to North. So North's original plan was to open a spade, rebid the diamond, show their five four, and hopefully rebid diamonds twice to show five five. Um, that didn't work. The reason that didn't work is because West is also here, and West has made a preemptive bid. That's an aggressive bid that West has made. It looks like they've got lots of hearts and not many points. Um, our partner's made a response, albeit a somewhat uh, negative response, in that they've denied a spade fit and they've also denied a hand good enough to bid at the two level. So our partner's limited to up to about nine points. So that means in the best case scenario, the points are about 20-20. Our partner has nine, we have 11, that gives us 20, which gives the opponents 20. And in the worst case scenario, the opponents actually have more points than us. Um, so. This is a, a really awkward position for North. The bidding has not gone how they wanted. They wanted to bid the spades, then the diamonds, and then potentially the diamonds again if allowed, um, which has not happened. So your choice really is, do you pass and kind of give in to the preemptive bid? Do you bid four diamonds, uh, showing your 5-4 shape, um, which is quite a big bid, especially opposite a one note trump hand, and especially vulnerable? Uh, or do you make a takeout double? Takeout double will be short in hearts, which is true. Um, it will be tolerance for the other three suits, which is 
almost true. You can almost tolerate the other three suits, spades being one of them, diamonds we can definitely tolerate, clubs not so keen on, um, and a decent hand. A, a take out double by the opener, you should have a few more points than just a basic opening hand. So, kind of overall, we're not good enough to bid four diamonds, that would be too big a bid, um, and we're not good enough nor have the quite the right shape to make a take out double. So, I'm afraid we're going to have to pass with this hand and basically give in to the power of the preemptive bid, which is why that's such a good bid. Uh, so, yeah, I would pass. Hmm, so. East turned to bid. Um, their partners made a preemptive bid of three hearts. Now, if that was an opening bid of three hearts, it would guarantee seven cards in hearts. Absolutely. Well, unless they decide to be super aggressive for some reason with only six. Um, so, if it was an opening bid, it would be seven cards. As an overcaller, it's a little bit more vague, and that's because the one no trump response here has forced uh, our partner to have to jump to the three level. So, a weak jump overcall is typically six cards. Um, it could be seven, because th the three level is a little bit vague. If they jumped to the four level, you would expect eight cards or seven very good ones. What I'm trying to say is, West could have seven cards in hearts, or they could have six cards in hearts, and they've just decided to be aggressive, given the vulnerability and given the way that the opponents have opened the bidding and responded. So we're not exactly sure whether our partner has six hearts or seven hearts. If we know they have seven hearts, the level of the fit says that we want to bid four hearts, because with ten trumps, you want to be in, in a contract that needs ten tricks, so in this case, four hearts. Um, we do have quite a good hand to say our partner didn't know we had anything at all. Our partner has, uh, has bid on their own when we've passed. And we've actually got 13 points. Not only that, the ace-queen of spades is sat in the right place, if you like. Um, so I'm sorely tempted to bid four hearts. The problem we've got is there's no room for us to ask our partner, are you proud of your overcall? Do you think your hand is good for it, your three heart bid? There's just simply no room. If we bid now, we are signing ourselves up for four hearts. Even if we bid something like three spades or four clubs or whatever, we, we are signing our side up for four hearts. So it comes down to this decision, bid four hearts or don't. Um, given that I, t I tend to be an optimist, I think I'm going to bid four hearts with this hand, but there is definite arguments to not bid four hearts and instead simply pass and leave our partner in a safer contract of three hearts. I'm going to push our partner to try and make four hearts simply because I think it's quite likely we've got ten hearts and not only that we've got a lot more points than our partner was expecting. So we may well be able to make game with only twenty or so points between the two hands because of our ten card or sometimes nine card fit. So I would bid four hearts but I certainly respect anyone who would say pass is better. I think it's very close but I would bid four hearts simply because I'm an optimist. To the south, um, East has just bid four hearts, so that's pretty much our hand out of it now. We weren't likely to be bidding again anyway unless our partner made us with a double or something like that. Um, and we certainly don't want to be bidding now. Bidding something wild like five clubs would be exactly that, it would be wild. Um, we, just, we just don't know what's going on. The opponents may or may not be making four hearts. So there's no reason for us to bid as south. Don't forget, of course, our partner's opened the bidding and we've got six points. So we know that the opponents don't have the normal 25 points to make game. So there's no certainty with this four heart contract anyway. So there's certainly no reason to go sacrificing thinking they're going to make four hearts. Um, they've obviously bid it on shape rather than points. So uh, I would pass. Nothing to say here. Similarly with West, nothing much to say here. We've made a preemptive bid. We are quite maximum for our preemptive bid. Seven cards when we might have had six, and ten points when we might have had something like five. Um, so we're quite happy our partners raised us to game, presumably on a level of the fit or, or a reserve of points they haven't shown previously, or a bit of both. So yeah, so nothing to say. We're not interested in slam or anything like that. So uh, just pass. Right, well, we didn't have anything to say as north over three hearts, so we don't have anything to say over four hearts. There's no reason to penalty double or anything like that. We don't know they're not, they're not going to make it. Um, so we're going to have to give in to four hearts. Similarly, how we gave in to three hearts. Um, and we're going to be having to think about our opening lead in a minute. But for now, we're passing and, and letting the contract be four hearts by west. Okay, so opening lead to four hearts. Um, this is going to prove to be quite critical to whether they make the contract or not. I'm going to try to look at it from an unbiased view, although I know a certain lead would work better because I've seen all four hands. Um, but suits I wouldn't be interested in leading are diamonds. You should never lead away from an ace which is unprotected. That means the ace without the king. 
So we shouldn't lead the ace because that would promise the king, which we don't have. And we shouldn't lead a small diamond or the queen of diamonds against a trump contract. And that's because we, we're leading away from an unprotected ace. So what we would like is those diamonds led to us, preferably by this hand, but potentially by our partner, should they get the lead. So diamonds are out. Um, I wouldn't lead a singleton trump simply because that might do some finessing for the declarer. Singleton trumps also tend to be bad leads. So it's a black suit. We're leading clubs or we're leading spades. Now, one option would be the ten of clubs. Whenever you've got exactly two cards in a suit, you lead top of touching two. Oh, excuse me, top of a doubleton. So therefore, you would lead top of these two, the ten and then the eight, which would suggest you have a doubleton. I suppose you could have ten, nine, eight. Um, or you could lead top of touching two in a spade suit. In, that, in this case, that would be the jack of spades because those two are touching. This is known as an internal sequence because it's a sequence with an honour above it. So it's inside of your suit. Um, so the jack of spades, top of touching two, or the ten of clubs, top of a doubleton. Now, top of touching two tends to be better than top of a doubleton. But I'm going to have a look in a minute when we play the hand through. I'm going to have a look at how the lead might have differed if we had led the ten of clubs. But I'm going to lead the jack of spades because that's what I would lead at the table if this were a hand I hadn't seen uh, before. So the jack of spades is what I would opt for. Right, so down goes the dummy. Right, so we are in four hearts. Um, when you're in a trump contract, you want to try to count your losers or think about the suits you may lose tricks in and try to reduce the number of losers there. Um, so looking at the trumps, we have no losers in trumps. We've got all the top cards right the way down to the nine. Um, spades, we have no losers. We can play the ace on this jack and that would win the trick and then we would have no more spades in hand so we can trump them. Clubs and diamonds are where our potential problems are. So. If we were to uh, play towards the kings in those minor suits, we would need the aces to be in the correct places. So that would mean if we lead a club from this hand towards the dummy, we would hope the ace of clubs is with north on our left hand side. And if we were to play a diamond from the dummy towards our king, we would hope the ace of diamonds is on our right hand side, which means our king will make a trick. So there is potential for four losers in the minor suits. We could lose the king of diamonds to the ace there and then the queen of diamonds afterwards. And similarly, we could lose the king of clubs to the ace there and lose the queen of clubs afterwards. So we could have four losing tricks in the minor suits, which is worrying. Um, so we've got to make a decision as to how to play those suits. Now the best way to play the suits in isolation is to play low towards the king and low towards the king. They're, they're very, very similar suits. The only difference is the jack here, but that doesn't make too much of a difference. Um, so low towards the king and low towards the king, that would mean we would make as long as this hand doesn't have the ace of clubs and this hand doesn't have the ace of diamonds. So that would be quite unlucky if both hands had the correct aces sat over our kings and that would lead to us losing four minor tricks. The other alternative we have is we could try the queen of spades on this trick now, taking a spade finesse, um, which may lose to the king of spades on our right. Or maybe it will win and give us the ace of spades as a way of discarding one of our club losers. So the decision at this, this first trick is a critical one. Um, if we play the ace of spades, we need either this hand to have the ace of diamonds or this hand on the left to have the ace of clubs. We need one of those two things to be true. If that doesn't happen, then we're going to go off. The other alternative is to play the queen of spades now, hoping for the hand on our left to have the king of spades. If that works, we will then have the ace of spades to discard one of our clubs, and we will then only maximum lose one club and two diamonds to make our contract. So it comes down to the maths. The maths are the finesse of spades is a 50-50, the king of spades on our left is a 50% chance, albeit that's not strictly true, which I'll come back to in a minute. The chance of the ace of clubs being on our left or the ace of diamonds being on our right is 75%. And the reason for that is we need to win one of two 50-50s. We need either the ace of clubs on our left or the ace of diamonds on our right. So therefore, we should play the ace of spades on this trick, refusing the 50% chance and instead take the 75% chance. Um, there is a slight change in the odds in that the left-hand opponent opened the bidding and the right-hand opponent only showed six to nine points. So the left-hand opponent may well be more likely to hold points. Well, in fact, they are more likely to hold points. So the king of spades finesse is more likely than 50% to work, simply because they open spades on our left. However, it, I don't think it gets up to 75% chance, which is what you need it to, to beat the odds of leading low towards both your kings. So simply, we have a choice here. Play the queen of spades, hoping for, let, for north to have the king of spades, or play the ace of spades and hope that one of the two minor suits uh, works where we only have one loser in that suit. 
Uh, boiling it all down, the Ace of Spades is the best odds, although you'll see that the Queen of Spades would have won this trick, but of course we're not psychic, we can't see that North definitely has the King of Spades. Um, so the Ace of Spades is what I would play, and then I would draw the trumps, look to draw the trumps, to then play the minor cards towards the Kings, hoping for some friendly layout in the minor suits. But I would play the Ace of Spades on this trick, that all, that's what that all boils down to. Alright, South playing on the Ace of Spades. Not much exciting going on here. Um, depends on your signalling methods as to how you signal to your partner when the uh, opponents are winning the trick and you can't beat that card. So there is, in theory, a difference between the 7 and the 5. You have a choice. You play the 5 or you play the 7. Um, you could play encouraging, so you could play low is encouraging or high is encouraging. That would be held or reverse held. Or you could play count, which says I have a certain number of cards. You go high, low with an even or low, high with an even, depending on whether you play normal count or reverse count. This is purely defensive agreements between your, you and your, your partner. And it's a partnership agreement. So whichever card you think you should play is the correct one as long as you agree with your partner. I'm going to play the five simply because it's smaller. But the five could mean I don't like spades or I do like spades or I have a certain number of spades or I want you to lead a club. There's all sorts of special agreements here which I'm not going to get into because I've talked for hours and hours about them. Um, but you need to have a good agreement. When the, when the dummy is winning the trick and you can't beat that card... What does your small card mean? Does the 3 mean something? Does the 6 mean something? Obviously you can't get too specific, um, but low tends to mean something and high tends to mean something. So in my system I play upside down count, so I play low high when I've got an even number. So I would actually play the 5 which suggests I have an even number. But that's what it is, it's whatever you agree with your partner. But I'm going to play the 5 for simplicity. Okay, not too much to think about here. No option but to play the 9, so the 9 of spades gets played and we're on the dummy. So that's trick one done. So, we've now got to uh, decide how to go about drawing these trumps. Now, as it happens, we have all the trumps right the way up from the nine all the way to the ace. So it doesn't really matter what we do here. Um, we would like the trumps to break 2-1, because when the trumps break 2-1, that means our third diamond in hand can be trumped by that shortage on the dummy. The trumps aren't 2-1, we've got to be a little bit careful about getting rid of those diamonds first before we get rid of dummy's last trump. Um, I would play the ace of hearts first, simply because I then want to be in hand on the second round, assuming the trumps are breaking 2-1. If not, we will have to do something else first. Um, so I'd play the ace of hearts just to see how the trumps are breaking. So the ace of hearts gets led from the dummy. South plays the seven of hearts, we play something small, and North plays the three of hearts. So the trumps are indeed breaking 2-1, that's four trumps gone, we've got six in hand and two in the dummy, so that's 12 in total, which means one opponent has one more trump, which is good news. So we've won that trick. Now we can draw that last trump. You could easily draw the trump with the nine of hearts on the dummy, or come over to the king, queen, jack, or ten, they're all equivalent, just need to play something bigger than the eight. Um, doesn't really matter. I'm going to play to hand, but it honestly doesn't matter which order you do this in. So I play the five of hearts. South plays the eight of hearts. We win, whatever. And North has to discard something. It's quite likely North will discard a small diamond, simply because there is no diamond threat on the dummy, whereas there is a spade length threat on the dummy. So it's good to keep length with the dummy as a defender. Um, they could discard a club as well. The clubs don't particularly help them, but the diamonds look more useless given there's no length. So I would discard a small diamond. So that's the trumps drawn. That's good that they were 2-1. That happens quite a lot of the time. Kind of just over 70% of the time they'll break 2-1. Um, and now we need to play those minor suits for no losers. We need to play a diamond from the dummy towards our king or a club from this hand towards that king, hoping that the ace of clubs isn't there and the ace of diamonds isn't there, as said before. We've just won the king of hearts in hand, so that means we are going to be playing from this hand. We must not play diamonds from this hand. We must play diamonds from the dummy. Similarly, we must play clubs from this hand and not from the dummy. We need to lead towards our threat. So I would lead a low club to the king, hoping that the ace of clubs is here rather than here. So that's exactly what I'd do. I'd lead a low club. They will play low. Second hand should play low anyway, but they happen to have nothing to think about here. We play the king, and what we're hoping for here is the ace of clubs is on our left, so the king of clubs wins this trick. But that is not the case. Ace of Clubs is on our right, which is bad news. Um, we've just lost one of our 50-50s. So this is starting to look a little bit scary now, because we, we might well have the Ace of Diamonds on our left. Not only that, the opponent on our left opened the bidding and has so far turned up with only the Jack of Spades. So they sort of look odds-on to have the Ace of Diamonds now, so we're starting to feel a little bit scared. 
Anyway, uh, as a defender of south, we should return a spade because our partner may well have the king, and in fact does have the king. Um, unfortunately for us, the declarer is going to trumpet here, but it's the safest thing to do. You shouldn't try and cash clubs or anything like that because it might set something up in the declarer's hand. Just be as safe as possible and as passive as possible, if you can be. So the spade comes back. We do not want to run that to the queen because if we run that to the queen, then we will lose the trick simply because the king of spades is very likely on our left. So we should rough it. We could throw a loser away here if you wanted to. Uh, and let it run to the Queen of Spades, setting the Queen of Spades up, but that won't help us. We still need the Ace of Diamonds on our right, so it, it actually doesn't matter in effect. Um, spade gets played, so we win that trick. Now, we are currently... No way of getting to the dummy. We're currently in hand, and there is no way of getting to the dummy. We want to lead the diamonds from the dummy, but we simply can't do that. So we've got a bit of a problem now. Um, the problem is lack of entries. We, we really wanted to play the diamonds from the dummy. Perhaps I should have thought about this earlier and went over there with the ace of hearts. And we've got a bit of a problem because the opponents keep giving us the lead back when we don't want it. So you could play diamonds from hand, but that will certainly result in losing two diamond tricks and this club trick to the queen, wherever the queen is. Um, so we need to give them the lead. We could go over to the nine of hearts, but the problem with that is we need that, th that trump on there to trump our third diamond. So what I'm thinking of doing here is losing the club to whichever opponent we have to lose to. And then we're going to see whether they lead diamonds for us or in fact get us to the dummy somehow. So that is what I would do. I'd lead a club, basically giving them the lead because we're in trouble. We're in trouble because the ace of clubs was in the wrong hand, basically. Um, so jack of clubs gets the ten there, low club there, and they win the queen of clubs. Which is fine. And we've lost that trick. Now this defender, South, is on lead again. Um, they still shouldn't lead diamonds. Now if they do lead diamonds, you can see it goes diamond. Our king is trapped underneath the ace-queen, so we're going off. But they should actually lead clubs. The nine of clubs beats the seven. Um, because that puts us back in hand. That puts us back in hand so we can't lead anything from the dummy. We're constantly threatened by leading from this hand, not that hand. It just goes to show you the power of passive defence. Leading to give the lead back to the declarer, they're constantly having to lead from their hand. It's really bad for the declarer. So I would lead the nine of clubs, making the declarer trump. Yes, you could lead a diamond, and yes, it would work, because the king is sat underneath the ace-queen, but that's not necessarily the way the diamonds are positioned. So you're forced to rough here. Probably better to rough high, just in case, in case you need a lead over there. Uh, nine of clubs is played. We can discard something pretty relevant. What North discards here? Probably a diamond. And now we are stuck in hand, we are stranded as a declarer. What we'd like to do is get to the dummy to play a diamond towards the king, hoping for the ace of diamonds on our right, but we just can't get there. Yes, we can get there with the six of hearts, the nine of hearts, but we need that heart to trump our last diamond, our third overhanging diamond here. So we've got big entry problems. We had big entry problems simply because there wasn't that many entries to the dummy. The ace of spades was one, which they took. The ace of hearts was another, which, which we used to draw the trumps. So, we've got a bit of a problem. Um, it would appear it would have been better for me if I'd had the foresight to draw the trumps leaving myself over there to play a diamond towards the king. As it happens, it wouldn't have mattered because the ace of diamonds and the queen of diamonds and in fact the jack of diamonds are all on our left. So what's going to happen here is we're going to end up losing two diamond tricks. We're losing two diamond tricks and then trumping that third diamond. doesn't matter how you play these diamonds. You play low, they win small. You play high, they win big. Um, they've got you, basically. Um, you could rattle off your trumps hoping they throw the wrong thing away, but everybody knows diamonds haven't been played yet, so they know you're very likely to have diamonds left in your hand. So simply, we're going off. We're losing two diamond tricks, we're trumping the third diamond on the dummy, and then we've got trumps left. So we've currently lost two tricks, we're losing two more diamond tricks, which means we are going one off in our four heart contract. There was a way to make this four hearts if we'd played the queen of spades at trick one, taking the spade finesse there. That would have worked because the queen of spades wins, because the king of spades is on our left. And then we could have thrown one of our club losers away in hand. Um, I could have played this slightly better if I'd played a diamond from the table, went over there with the trump. Um, but as it happens, the ace of diamonds was here and the ace of clubs was here, which was exactly what we didn't need. So we got really unlucky, basically. Everything went wrong and we chose the wrong line. We could have finessed the queen of spades at trick one, which would have yielded in us making ten tricks. So yeah, we went one off when we could have made it.